Let's start by looking at one of the smartest things you can do with an email. Take action instead of just reading and forgetting. Gmail gives you three powerful ways to manage your messages. Snoozing, creating a task, or turning it into a calendar event. Most people are familiar with just one of them, and that's snoozing, but today we're going to explore all three and when to use each one. First up is snoozing. Have you ever opened an email and thought, I can't deal with this right now? That's when snooze comes in. Snoozing lets you temporarily hide an email and bring it back at a more convenient time, like tomorrow morning, next Monday, or a specific day that you can choose. The email will literally leave your inbox and return to the top when the snooze ends. It's like a polite nudge from your inbox when you're ready to deal with it. Here's the catch though. Snoozing is passive. If you, It doesn't create a task or a time block. It just delays your decision. And that can be a problem if you keep snoozing the same message over and over. Now let's talk about adding to tasks. If you want to go from passive to productive, then adding the email to Google Task is the way to go. With just one click, Gmail creates a to-do item from the email. The subject line becomes the task title and the full email remains linked for easy access. You can add a due date, organize it into a task list, or even add subtasks. This is perfect for emails that require a follow-up, a reply, or an action that doesn't necessarily need to be done at a specific time just something you don't want to forget. It's especially useful for personal accountability, and if you use Google Calendar, your task can appear right alongside your events. So nothing slips through the cracks. And finally, create a calendar event. Now let's say email is about a meeting, a phone call or a deadline, something you actually need to do at a specific time. Instead of writing it down somewhere or setting a reminder in your head, click Create Event from the three-dot menu. Gmail will open Google Calendar in a new tab and pre-fill the event with the email content. You just set the time and date and you're ready to go. You can invite others, add a location, include a Google Meet link, and most importantly, you now made time for it. Creating an event turns your email into real-world commitment. You've just moved from thinking about something to actually scheduling it. So let's recap quickly with a side-by-side -side comparison. Snooze is like a reminder. Task is an action. And Google Event is a time commitment. Each has its place, but knowing which one to use can make a big difference and how well you stay on top of things. Coming up next, we'll start with the most structured approach, turning an email into a calendar event. I'll walk you through the steps and show you why this can be a game changer for meetings, deadlines, and time-sensitive information. Let's start by turning an email into something powerful, a calendar event. This is the perfect move when the email contains a meeting, appointment, deadline, or even just something you want to block some time for. No more copying and pasting into your calendar or forgetting to follow up. Gmail and Google Calendar work seamlessly together to make it super easy. If you look at his inbox, you'll see a new email that's come in from Ron Brown. It's a dinner request. Let's open the email up and it says, Beamer, can you and Sylvia come for dinner at 5.30 on August 6th? No need to bring anything. And it's signed Ron. Okay, so now we um, need to reply to this, of course, but what we want to do is we want to add this to our calendar and notify Sylvia. We could snooze this for August the 5th, but I want to put it on our calendar to make sure there's no conflict. So 
To add this to Google's calendar, come up to the three dot menu, click more, and you can see here that there is a create an event. Let's click this. And this takes you right into uh, Google Calendar. So what you see here is you've seen that the title dinner request is now going to be added to the calendar. Now it's for August the 6th at 530. So by simply clicking, clicking today's date, we can now come down to August 6th and we will choose the time because this is time sensitive and it will be at 530. And let's say till 8 p.m. And it's not all day and it does not repeat. So this is now we're going to save this. Uh, and as we come down here, we can see that, of course, uh, Beamer is the organizer. And we're going to add guests. I want, I want to add it to the calendar of Sylvia. So let's add Sylvia in. So now Sylvia is going to get a notification and it's going to add this to her calendar as well. So we're going to save this. Would you like to send them in to Google Calendar Guests? Yes. Um, we'll send that. Now, I want you to come over here, and I want you to look down on the left side. And of course, we'll have Beamer Brown, and also on the calendar we have tasks. Remember the tasks? So now the car washing task we did before is now, of course, on Sunday. You can see this. And this is an example of a task that automatically gets added to your calendar. So as we come along here, you'll now see on our calendar on the Wednesday, we'll see that there is a dinner request at 530. If I click this dinner request, this will bring up uh, the information that we have. And you'll be able to see here that, of course, this brings up the information that was uh, on our email, you can see at the bottom here where the original email was. And you can see that, of course, we have sent this to Sylvia as well. All right, we've seen how to schedule an email as a calendar event. But what if you don't need to block time, you, yet you still need to follow up or take action? That's where Gmail's Add to Task really shines. Instead of letting an email slip through the cracks or worse, snoozing it into oblivion, you can turn it into a to-do item right from your inbox. And the best part, the original email stays linked to your task so you always know exactly what it is about. Let me walk you through how it works. All right, here we are in my fictitious account called Beamer Brown. Now, my wife has just sent me an email and says, can you wash my car on Sunday? Let's open this up here and I need to schedule this as a task. So I don't forget, not something I want to forget. So as we come up here, we can see this top menu. Let's click the three dot menu and it simply says add to tasks. So we're going to click this and that immediately over in the right hand panel, puts this in my task list. This is the list I have made up called my tasks. Now, can you wash the car on Sunday? So uh, today let's, let's book that in for Sunday. Sunday is here and we'll say this is done. We could, um, we can set a time. Uh, let me say, I'm going to do it around 10. It's a little bit warmer then. Uh, we're not going to repeat this. You could repeat it if you want. We're going to click done. And now in my tasks, it's going to um, list this for a task tomorrow. When we complete it, we just click this here. Why is this so powerful? Because now your to-dos are separate from your inbox, but still directly connected to the emails that mattered. This reduces inbox clutter and gives you a clear checklist of what needs to be done without relying on your memory or sticky notes. If you've ever left emails unread, just so you'd remember that to follow up later, you're going to love this. Tasks give you a clean, structured way to manage all those email-based items. Now, here's a bonus tip. If you add a due date to your task, it will automatically show up in Google Calendar under your Tasks Calendar. 
So your to-dos are always in view when you're planning a day. In short, add to task is perfect for emails that require attention, things you need to remember but don't need to schedule, and staying on top of responsibilities in a structured, low-pressure way. Next up, we'll look at snoozing emails while convenient might actually be hurting your productivity and how tasks and calendar can be a much better long-term strategy. So the problem with snoozing emails. Let's talk about a feature we've all used and I made a video about called snooze. At first glance, snoozing seems like a perfect solution. You're not ready to deal with an email, so you tell Gmail, remind me tomorrow, or bring it back Friday at 9 a.m. And yes, it feels satisfying. The email disappears from your inbox, and you feel like you've done something with it. But here's the truth. Snoozing is a band-aid, not a plan. You snooze an email to Friday at 9 a.m., but you didn't block out time on your calendar. So when Friday arrives, your morning is already full of meetings. That email pops back up and you hit snooze again. Now it's next week and nothing has changed. This creates what I call a snooze spiral. You keep pushing emails off without real decisions on allocating time to take action. Why snoozing fails as a productivity tool? Well, it delays decisions. Snoozing feels productive, but it's actually avoidance. You're not committed to action, just postponing it. It doesn't create visibility. Unlike tasks or calendar events, snoozing emails don't appear in your daily to-do list or schedule. Out of sight, out of mind. And it can even lead to inbox clutter. You might end up with a flood of snoozed emails all reappearing at once, overwhelming and easy to ignore. So a better approach, ask yourself this question every time you're tempted to snooze an email. Is this something I need to do or schedule? If yes, turn it into a task. It if it needs to happen at a certain time, schedule a calendar event. If you generally just want a reminder and have no action to take, then go ahead and snooze it. But use snooze as a last resort, not your default. So why is calendar and task integration so powerful? Well, calendar equals time commitment. You're reserving time for it. Others can join in if you want to collaborate. Task equals action commitment. You're tracking what needs to get done. No time blocked unless you schedule it, but it is visible. Gmail makes it seamless. You don't have to leave your inbox, and it keeps your focus centralized. All right, to finalize things, here are some bonus productivity tips. Let's look at creating labels for specific types of tasks or events, like follow-up, finance, or appointments. Also, use calendar color coding. This helps visually separate different types of events by choosing different colors for different types of events. Link calendar and tasks together. Example, use tasks with due dates that also show in the calendar. So as we finalize this, Let's try turning your next three important emails into a task or calendar event. If this helped you, give it a like and share it with productivity-minded individuals. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.